Hi, this is Darlene from Digital Photo Mentor. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through layers and blending modes in Photoshop to see if I can't demystify the blend modes and what they mean and when you might apply them in your photography. So I'm going to open up an image in Photoshop and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As you can see, I have Photoshop opened and I've actually just created a plain image. So it is pure gray from edge to edge, 50% gray, halfway in the middle between black and white. The easiest way to demonstrate what the blend modes do is by using this gray image and I've created one on top that goes from pure black to pure white. Okay, so what that's going to help us do is show um, how the blend modes work. Because what they do in effect is they you tell Photoshop how you want it to handle this layer or this image, comparing it to the one below. Okay, so this image has parts which are darker and parts which are lighter. And we're gonna go through the different blend modes to see how they affect what the final image looks like when we blend the two together. Okay, so right now you can see that it you can see the full black and white image, you don't see any of the gray. And that is normal. Your default when you start is oddly enough called normal blend mode. So what that means is that this layer is 100% opacity and you're not seeing the one below it at all. Okay, now we can change the opacity of this layer as well, but that is something different than blend modes. Okay, if I change the opacity of this layer, you can see that it starts to apply um, in a different form compared to the one below it. It's just fading it out. Okay, so opacity is like a fader. Okay, so we're not going to use opacity, we're going to use the blend modes. Okay, the blend modes are divided up into sections that you can see here. Okay, so the first section starts with darken, the second one starts with lighten, third one starts with overlay, and so on. They're grouped that way because everything within that section applies um, a similar type of effect when you choose it. Okay, the first one we're going to start with is darken. And what that does is it tells Photoshop, okay, what I want you to do is look at this image and only show me anything that is darker on this layer than the one below, okay? So when we look at our black and white layer, we know that the black is darker than the gray, right? The white is not. So if we take a guess of what's gonna happen, what do you think? So I'm gonna click on darken and you can get to your blend mode simply by pulling down the um, drop down menu right next to where it says opacity on your layers palette. Okay, if this is not showing, if you don't see a layers palette and you want to follow along, just go up into window and choose layers and it will pop up a layers panel for you. Okay, so I'm going to change the blend mode to darken. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's only going to show the dark parts compared to the gray below. Okay. So you see what happened? It looks like the white disappeared, okay? Because the white part is not darker than the gray below, only the black is, okay? Now, if we toggle through the other options in this section, there's multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darken burn, they all do the same type of thing in a diff slightly different way, okay? I'm gonna give you a little shortcut and I'm gonna use a little keyboard shortcut myself here. Um, if you want to toggle through them without having to use your mouse or um, the pull down menu, just hit V on your keyboard, okay, which is actually the move tool. And then you can toggle through the blend modes by hitting shift plus or minus. Okay, so plus will go down and minus will go up. So you can see now we're on multiply. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see the blend mode there. Okay, so you can see we're on multiply now. If I go to the next mode, it goes to color burn. And for the most part, you're still seeing the same thing, a gray and a black image. Okay. Linear burn and darker color. Okay, so that's it in that section and they're all fairly similar. So usually when you want to have your image, when you're putting something on top of another and you want only the dark bits to show, you're gonna choose one of those blend modes. So you can toggle through them, see which one looks best, and then you can also play with your opacity. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the next section, which is lighten. 
Okay, so see if you can anticipate and take a guess as to what's going to happen when I click lighten. Okay, remember that this is a black and white image. Okay, if we're looking at just that, it's white on this side and black on the left. Okay, and so when we click this to say lighten, it's only going to show the parts which are lighter than the medium gray below it. Okay, was that what you expected? That is what I expected. Okay, so remember the part that's showing on the left over here is the image below. Okay, because this layer is black, it is not showing anything that is black or darker than the medium gray below it. It's only showing the parts that are lighter, which is white. Okay, so the same thing applies. There are a few lighten blend modes, and I'm going to scroll through those using my shift plus key again. So there's screen. Color Dodge. Now notice that the blend area got a little bit thinner there, so it kind of falls off a little bit quicker. And then there's Linear Dodge and Lighter Color. Okay, so again, they were fairly similar, but you notice sort of the zone of fade changed a little bit when you went from one to the other. Okay. Now we have a third set, which um, start with Overlay. So they include Overlay, Soft Light, Hard Light, Vivid Light, and so on. Okay, what they do is they will change and affect the contrast. Okay, so they're looking for contrast compared to the bottom image. So let's go ahead and choose overlay and see what that does. Okay, so it's showing me, yes, I have a lot more contrast in this image than the one below. Obviously, black and white is more contrasty than gray. Let's go through the next one. Okay, soft light. Okay, when I go back, so we had pure black and pure white. Now we've got kind of light gray and dark gray, okay? So it just softened the look a little bit. Hard light, back to pure white and black. Okay, vivid light, look at our little center zone there, the fade zone changed again. Linear light. Okay, pin light, okay, now we've got an interesting gray stripe in the middle, okay? And hard mix, now look at, we've got a completely full on hard line, there's no fade from black to white, okay? The ones below it um, are work more on a color image, so I'm going to leave those for the moment because they apply, they look for differences, okay? And the ones at the bottom are applying a color. So we're going to go to our next layer that I've created just to demonstrate the same thing again and show you something um, on top. So I put a gray box back on top of our black and white image, okay? First thing I'm going to do is just change this back to normal, okay? So the the black and white layer is blending at normal, okay? The gray box is currently blending at normal, but let's just change some of those blend modes and see what they do, okay? So as we scroll down, okay, the first one is darken, okay? So where is the gray part darker than what's in be the layer below? It's darker where it overlaps the white, okay? So clearly the gray box is showing up. And as I scroll through, again, you'll see the center portion or the blend section is what is changing here. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? So, okay, so it completely diff disappeared almost, except for the blend mode in the center. Linear burn and darker color. Okay, so for the most part, the ones in that section are adding darkness or showing any part of this layer that is darker. And what is changing for the most part, with the exception of the color burn, was the central zone or that fade area. Okay, let's go through the lightened ones. Okay, so as expected, gray is lighter than black. Okay, it is not lighter than white, so it's going to show up now on the black side. Okay. As I scroll through them, you'll see that the central strip is changing. There's that color dodge. So color dodge is obviously similar to color burn, right? Linear dodge, lighter color, okay? So all of those are showing the parts that's lighter, right? So this is where it might get interesting is let's go down to the other ones here in the overlay section, okay? So now we've just got a strip in the middle, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light and pin light. Okay, so they're showing you, oh, one more, hard mix. Okay, look at that. That's interesting. All right, so when you're blending one layer on top of the other, again, this is going to have all kinds of different applications depending on what you're doing. If you're trying to blend a sky into another image or something like that, um, you're going to be able to control which part of your top layer is showing through 
and which part of your bottom layer is showing through. Okay. So I'm going to turn this gray layer off for the moment and the black and white layer off. And let's see what happens when we do an actual image. Okay. So I've got this image here. This is um, kind of a gray dull day in Peru that I took this picture a few years ago. But it works well because it's got some bright colors and as we scroll through the blend modes you get an idea of how they're applying compared to the gray layer below. So remember it's always comparing to what is directly below. Notice that I've turned off Oops, I can't spell apparently. Let's notice that I've turned off the black and white layer and the gray box layer. Okay, so it's only the gray background that we're working on here. Okay. Make sure your layer is selected and let's go through our blend modes. Okay, so darken. Look what happened. The sky completely disappeared because it's the only area that was lighter than the gray image below. As we go through all of these modes, okay, various different darkening effects. Okay. Now we're into darkened color and it's vi it's made the flowers really vibrant. Okay, so see a difference between that and just darken. Okay. When we go down into lighten, now the sky is appearing and the flowers have pretty much disappeared. Okay, so you start to anticipate or start to be able to kind of anticipate what these different modes are going to do. And at the very least, you can choose the right section for the effect that you want to apply on your images. Okay, so these ones are all lightening. Okay. Next one, we're looking for contrast now. Okay, so these ones are going to be looking for how the contrast is different, and obviously it's quite different than the gray below. Okay, so they're adding contrast. That's a lot of contrast. Okay, now you may think that there's not a lot of application for these things. However, something like um, something like hard light, which is adding some contrast, or let's go back up to um, one that's giving us a lot of color. Okay, so something like that might actually be interesting if you apply it as a duplicate layer. Okay, so for example, if we have our flowers as a normal layer and we duplicate it, so I did that with Command or Control J on the keyboard, and then I change that to that color darken. There it is. Didn't do a whole great deal, did it? Let's look at contrast. Okay, so you can add some contrast with a layer. The original is still underneath. Okay, and then you can scale back the opacity. Okay. You can also mask it out. So if you decide you want it only on the sky or only on the flowers. So it gives you a way to um, apply some different effects without actually losing any pixels. Okay, this is non-destructive editing. So a lot of times duplicating your layer and changing the blend mode will give you a different effect on your picture and bring out some more details. Okay. Let's go down to the contrast ones. Okay. Lots of contrast. And then the last ones, what they're doing is almost looking for an inversion. Okay, so like I said, it's looking for a difference from the bottom image to the top. These ones are helpful if you're doing things like you're trying to align two layers, if you've shot multiple bracketed images and you're trying to align them um, and the auto correct or auto align isn't working so well, or if you're trying to do things like, um, for example, a high pass filter, you might use this type of mode to change it back into a sharpening layer, that type of thing. Okay, so I don't use these ones a whole great deal, but the lighten and the darker ones I use quite a bit. Let's look at one more image and see what it does on, on this one. Okay, so we're also on the gray. So we'll scroll through our different blend modes. So darken, you'll notice that everything that's darker than gray um, now shows. So everything that was lighter went away, right? So just go back up to normal. So all the white areas have now been filled with the gray from the layer below, right? and the various darken modes. Okay. So what I suggest is pick a couple of images of your own, play around with this and just get a feel for what the different blend modes do and how you might apply that. Okay. If you wanted to add contrast, you could duplicate a layer, change the blend mode, play with the opacity, mask some of it out. Okay. In a future video, I'll talk a little bit more about masking so that you can um, 
show the areas that you want a little more specifically. Okay, so this is what's called a global adjustment and masking will be more of a local adjustment to just show small areas and you brush that in. Okay, so I hope this kind of gives you a little better idea of how blend modes work and how you might apply them in your photography. Just create a gray image like I did on the bottom, stick one of your pictures on top and play around with some of, of the blend modes and see if you can't figure out what they're doing. I hope that's helpful and until next time, we'll see you again.